Hi there again from the Hermitage in Johannesburg. As a Franciscan, our alternative Franciscan orthodoxy is to be found in the writings of Blessed John Duns God is love, and therefore first comes love. The perennial teaching of the philosophers have stated that we must know in order to love. Can you love what you do not know? This follows the concepts of Aristotle, whereby the way to rationality is through experience, to knowledge, understanding, and then wisdom. For St. Thomas Aquinas, it was the will that followed understanding that led to the choice of love. Experience leads to understanding, followed by reflection and judgment, and then only can we choose to love. The underlying message for me was that I need to be worthy of love. This left me with a terrifying image of God as judge, who, being fully rational and completely holy, rejects all things unworthy, even and especially me. It was therefore knowledge that I chose as my own particular diversionary tactic, hiding behind knowledge and intellect, sneering behind all those books, to hide my unworthiness. Ouch! From 2005 to 2007, I ministered at the Canterbury Central Prison. This ministry involved us in what is called the Sycamore Tree Project. This brings together unrelated victims and offenders in an intensive five to eight week in-prison program, victims and criminals face to face. They discuss the effects of crime, the harm it has caused, how to make things right. Then follows conversations about responsibility, confession, repentance, forgiveness, amends and reconciliation. These lead naturally to opportunities for the participants to express their own particular feelings. Offenders explore ways of making restitution for the harm caused by their behaviour. Victims consider as way they can continue their journey towards healing and restoration. And finally the group meets for a celebration. It was for this ceremony to take place on a Saturday morning. I was among the group representing society from all walks of life. The ceremony was simple, with each prisoner telling their own story, asking for acceptance back into society, and then placing a pebble in a pond of water and lighting a candle. At the conclusion of the celebration, those representing society are asked if they wish to speak to the assembly. The grandmother in the group rose, speaking directly to the prisoners, asking them for their forgiveness, for any and all who had had experience of neglect, who had experienced abuse from parents, grandparents or other family members. One of the prisoners began sobbing. It was as though the Holy Spirit had breathed through the room, creating that sacred space for trust, for true healing and reconciliation to take place. As a crime victim from New Zealand later attested, I witnessed a man murdering my father. I've been carrying this hatred and hurt for more than 25 years. For the first time I can truly say that I have forgiven the man that murdered my father. The feeling is something I can't describe. It was with the greatest joy that I found within our Franciscan intellectual tradition the findings of Blessed John Duns Scotus. He affirmed that it is gift love, or as he defines it, ordered love, that is the key to unlocking our potential for rationality. He rejects the over-intellectualized philosophical view of the supremacy of the intellect and argues that ordered love, not knowledge, defines and perfects human rationality. Human dignity is the foundation of rational freedom. In contrast, 
to the philosophical, intellectualist model of human nature and destiny, the Franciscan way offers and strengthens the Christian alternative, centered not merely on knowledge, but on love. The Franciscan tradition consistently defends a position wherein the fullest perfection of the human person as rational involves loving in the way God loves, rather than knowing in the way God knows. From love we come to truth, a relationship that leads us to knowledge. This was the brilliant intuition of Francis, to which Duns Scotus gives the rational explanation. Love is something that is given to us from outside. It is almost like something we catch, just like a virus. Parents love, for the child infects the child, and therefore they can enter into loving relationships. The parents have gone through the same transmission, and their parents before them, their parents before them. And at the beginning, from God, who is the source beyond the limit of any gender, gift love, unconditional agape love, is however seldom to be found in our human condition. Our love is all too often corrupted by greed, attachments, and the many other contagions that the ego affirms. Added to this problem is the limited window of opportunity in which we can acquire this love, six to seven years. We have to become like little children again, gazing into our mother's eyes, that reflect the eyes of the lover. This is the source and goal of the Martha and Mary relationship within the Franciscan solitude experience contained in our ruleful hermitages. I've read so many books, attended so many retreats and courses, listened to thousands of hours of meditative practices, yet it was only when I stopped and was outside of any agenda that I was given those treasured momentary tastes of awareness, those special gifted moments in the gaps between time when everything is one. This compassionate stance within the mystical marriage tradition has become my own little way, striving to match the emptiness of the lover who emptied himself for me. I have found certain contemplative practices helpful in my day-to-day -day practice of recalling myself to the moment. I have learned that, from my period in the cardiac intensive care unit, that every gasp for air, every silent moment, can become a wordless prayer. This was just being, being in that eternal now of suffering, where the past no longer holds any anchor and the future phantoms have no foothold. This mindfulness is the way of opening myself to the reality of the present moment, without that continual need for judgment. For me, I must approach the practice of meditation in the spirit, releasing all preconceptions, all expectations. I have to be continually aware of how my own false self clings to the need to be right, to understand, to control all the contradictions of life, the need for perfection, to be applauded, and the desire for victory. The humility of dying to my ego is indeed counterintuitive step in our current culture of hoarding and attainment. Only by letting go of control, allowing myself to become vulnerable, in the tenderness of self-revelation, allowing love to be free and allowing the intimacy of poverty to wash over me, have I found freedom and abundance. Full participation truly does bring greater intimacy with myself, with others and the divine. In this emptiness, everything, everything is gift, everything is grace. The Lord grant you peace.